I'm Jeff Perlman, founder and CEO of Zojo, and in this video I'm going to show you how to add, update, and delete records in a database from Zojo. Now if you haven't watched the connecting to a database or querying a database videos, you'll probably want to watch those first. In this video I'm going to be building this app. Uh, you can search for customers, press search, Click on a customer, it displays information about them. I can make a change. Let's change this to Texas, press save. And you'll see if I switch away from the customer and back, the change was saved. You can make new records and you can delete records. So this is the app I'm gonna build. So this is the project as it was at the end of the uh, querying a database video. Just like then, uh, we've got a app class that has an opening event. It, uh, we're using SQLite in this case. It, it uh, attaches a SQLite database that I have on my desktop, and it tries to connect to it, then opens the window. Um, we're storing the database connection in this DB property so we can get to it because the app class is global. And in the window, we've got a field and a search button. The search button calls this query database method I created, which basically does the query, finds any customer whose first name or last name equals the value and then adds all the results to the list box. So that's the uh, project as it is and that's where we're gonna start from. So the first thing we need to do is that when the user does that search, we're gonna need to know the ID of each customer in the database so that we can then go grab that record and fill in all those fields that we'll be creating. So I'm gonna to go to the query database method here and we're gonna add a line to get the ID and we're gonna store it in each row of the list box, specifically in the row tag. So I'm gonna use uh, the results list, results list dot row tag at. So we're gonna access the row tag. And what we want is we want the last added row. So results list dot last added row. That tells us which rows row tag we're gonna use. And we're gonna set that equal to row dot column ID, because that's the unique ID for each row in the database. And there we go. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is go back to the window and we need to change this. We need some room for those fields. So I'm gonna change this from a two column to a one column list box. And I'm gonna change the header to just say customer. Okay, so now we can make this smaller We've got some room here for those fields. Now we need to, to combine the um, first name and last name into a single cell because before it was in two columns. So I'm gonna go back to query database and you can see here it's, we're adding the first name and comma and last name so that'd be two separate columns. So I'm gonna get rid of this comma here and just put plus space plus. Now that we're combining them into one column. So now when we type in the name of a customer and hit search, we can see that the customer's first name and last name are combined into our single column. Great. So now I need to add the fields and the labels so that we have them to fill in data. And rather than you having to watch me drag out a bunch of controls, as if by magic, there they are. Now, when the user clicks on a customer in the list box, what we're going to want to do is we're going to get the row tag, get the ID from the row tag, and we're going to want to do a query uh, so we can go get that customer record and be able to modify it. And we need to store that, that row set somewhere. So I'm gonna add a property to the window called current row, and I'm gonna make it a row set. So our query will, will the results of our query will be stored there. So when the user clicks on a row in the list box, um, that causes a selection change event to fire. So we're gonna add that. And what we need to do here is basically put in some code to go get the customer record from that ID and assign the values from the current row to the uh, fields. Now, rather than you watching me type that, I'm gonna go ahead and paste the code in and explain what it does. So this first uh, first line basically says, make sure that there's a row selected. We didn't, don't can't proceed to get the row ID unless there's a row selected. Then we get the ID from the row tag for the selected row. So now we have the ID. Then we do a SQL select. We're doing select star from customers where ID equals and the ID. And that row gets stored in our new current row property. And then it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we set each uh, text field's text property to the corresponding column 
with the same name uh, from the current row row set that we've created. And we go through all of them and do that. You'll notice with taxable, it's a checkbox. So I, it's a Boolean, so I'm setting it to the result of this equation. So if, in, if the integer value of taxable equals one, then that's true, so it'll set it to true and the checkbox will be checked. And if all goes well, then great. If there's an error, then uh, the uh, catch portion of try catch will fire and the message box will appear, letting the user know that for some reason the row couldn't be loaded. So let's, uh, let's give that a try. All right, I'm gonna do a search for a customer. Got a couple of them here and I click and everything's filled in. Great, so we got that working. All right, now let's add the save button. So I'm gonna drag out a button position it, and I'm gonna call it save button, and make the caption save. Now we need to add some code to actually save the uh, record. So I'm gonna double click and add the pressed event. And again, rather than you having to watch me type, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in the code and explain it. So again, we're using try catch, just in case anything goes wrong. And we're using our current row property that we add to the window, and we're calling edit row. That allows us to edit that row. And then uh, we, it's just the reverse. We set the column in the current row equal to the value from the control. And with taxable, it's a, it's a checkbox, so we check the value and then set it to one or zero. And then at the end, we call save row. And if anything goes wrong, uh, then we'll get our exception. And I wanna point out, as I've said in other videos, Basically what I'm showing you would be true if you were building this as a web app. It would be pretty much all the same code if you're using a database server rather than SQLite. 95% of this would all be the same. It's, it's very minor differences, uh, such as connecting uh, is a little bit different. But aside from that, everything's gonna be pretty much the same. Now, you can also say that of building a mobile app if you're using SQLite. If you're using a server, then um, the way you access a database server from a mobile app is very different. I've mentioned this before, it's because of how the mobile operating systems work and not so much about how Zoja works. So now that we've got this, let's give it a try. All right, so I'm gonna search again and click and let's make a change. We'll change this to Texas. I'll press save and then we can check to see if it worked. We'll click here, click back. Yep, it worked, great. Next, let's add a delete button. So I'm gonna go to the library and grab another button. And I'm gonna call this delete button and let's make the caption delete. And we'll add the pressed event. And once again, I'm just gonna paste the code in here. It's pretty simple this time. It's a try catch again, and we're just gonna say current row dot remove row. And if that fails for whatever reason, we're gonna get our exception. That one's pretty easy. And now let's add a new button to make a new record. So I'm gonna drag out another button. I'll put it right here. And we'll go to the inspector, call it new button, and make the caption new. Great. Now this is a little trickier because when you, this is an interface thing. When the user clicks the new button, we're just indicating that they're making a new record. We still want them to click save to save it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna update the save code to know whether the user is saving an existing record or saving a new record, which means we need a flag. Uh, we need some way to know which is which. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a property to the window. I'm gonna call it new row and make it a Boolean. And the new button is just gonna set that. It's just gonna put new row equals true. So when the user clicks that button, we'll know we're making a new row. So now we can update the save uh, code to deal with that. Now, again, rather than you having to watch me type, I'm just gonna paste in my updated code. Here it is. So what's changed? Well, I've added this if statement. I'm gonna highlight it to make it really clear. And basically we check our new, our new row property, which we just added, and if that's true, then we create a, a variable called row as a new database row, and we just fill it in with the values from the controls. You can see that first name equals first name dot text, et cetera. And then we call app.db add row. We give it the name of the customer's uh, table and the row that we just created, and that adds the row uh, to the database. And then finally we set new row to false since we're done. Else we do what we were doing before. We edit the current row, we assign all the values, and we save the row. 
And in either case, if anything goes wrong, it'll drop into our error checking here where, we, where it gives us a message box and says that the customer record couldn't be saved. So let's give it a try. All right, so I'm gonna click new and I'm gonna fill in my name. And here, let's just put in a few things here. We're gonna have to fill the whole thing in and then I'm gonna press save, great. And then let's go and search for me. There I am, and there's the row. So we know that that worked, great. Now one last thing we wanna do when making a new row is deal with the possibility that the user might click new and then change their minds and not wanna actually create a new record after all and perhaps go do a search. So what that means is, is that when the user does a search in, with QueryDB, let's go find that method. First thing we should do is we should set uh, new row equal to false, because if they're doing a search, that means they're actually not making a new record after all. Last but not least, one of the things you're gonna find is that when you're developing a database application, sometimes your code that modifies the database isn't gonna go as planned, and it's gonna mess up your data. And rather than having to keep starting with a fresh copy, uh, there's a thing you can do to, to avoid that, and it's basically using a transaction and this is again only during testing, you can use a transaction to allow you to roll back any changes you make while you're testing. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of events. I'm gonna add the opening event. And there I'm gonna put app.db.begintransaction, that'll start it. And then in the closing event, I'll put app.db.rollbacktransaction. So that way, when I'm testing this window, it's gonna start a transaction, I can make whatever changes I want, and then when I close the window, it'll roll back the transaction, undoing any of those changes, and that just makes testing your, your code a lot easier. Now, you'll wanna take that out when you're done, but it's a great way to, uh, to test. Now, one thing I left out of this video is there are some interface issues to deal with. Um, if the user doesn't have a row selected, you may wanna disable these fields, uh, that sort of thing. And I'm gonna address those in the next video. So next you'll wanna watch the managing the user interface when updating a database video. To learn more about Zojo, click below to subscribe to this channel, check out the other videos, and visit zojo.com.